Welcome to the Entertainment Hub for another movie recap. Lee Abbott drives into a town and buys oranges at a store. In the store, we see rocket space toys. The shopkeeper is watching the news, where an extraordinary bomb in China is being reported. Lee then walks through the street to a park where his wife, Evelyn, pushes his youngest son Bo on a swing. The Abbott family is there to watch a baseball game in which eldest son Marcus is playing. Lee sits next to Regan, his eldest child, and only daughter, who is deaf, on the stalls and says hi to his friend Emmett, who is sitting behind them with his youngest son. Emmett's eldest son bats the ball and makes a home run. As he runs to the final base the crowd and Emmett are shouting, dive, as the fielders are close. After this Emmett asks Regan how to say, dive, and she signals a diving motion with her hands in American Sign Language. Bo and Evelyn wish Marcus good luck as he goes up to bat. Marcus misses the first two balls and then is distracted by a large meteor in the sky. The game stops and everyone starts heading back to their cars, homes. Regan goes with her dad and Evelyn takes the boys. The aliens are already here though and start attacking the street and killing lots of people. Day 474 The film cuts to moments after the events of A Quiet Place 1, the Abbott family leaves their home barefoot. By this point, day 472 to 473, Evelyn has given birth to a baby boy, Lee was killed protecting Marcus and Regan from an alien. Just before leaving the farm, Evelyn tells Marcus and Regan to stay there, while she quietly heads back into the flooded cellar and tries to stay quiet as she swims in search of an oxygen tank. Meanwhile, Regan collects the amplifier and microphone. She uses her clipper to cut a cord off the amplifier. Regan and Evelyn individually return in the family walk along the sandy path Lee had created until they reach the furthest point, and then they quietly step onto the dry leaves and continue their trek. Evelyn and Regan carry the baby in a trunk soundproofed with blankets and the oxygen tank is feeding a baby respiratory mask so that the trunk lid can be closed. The family reaches a wire fence with an opening. As Evelyn walks through, her bag gets caught and a small sound is made, she looks behind her concerned about the noise, and unknowingly triggers a tripwire that causes a bundle of bottles to fall and jangle. Evelyn whispers to Marcus and Regan, run. Meanwhile we cut perspective to the viewpoint through a gun aim that has been fixed on the family. An alien starts chasing the family. Whilst running, Marcus gets injured by a bear trap, which he handles silently until he sees his injured foot and lets out a primal scream. Evelyn tries to stop him screaming whilst Regan uses the amp, microphone and cochlear implant hearing aid to, to create feedback that is unbearable to the alien. Evelyn shoots the alien in the head as it struggles against the sound. The family head inside a nearby derelict building. As they walk round a corner a man grabs Evelyn, puts his hand over Evelyn's mouth and signals shish while pointing to an alien on the ceiling. The man leads the family to a soundproof vault underground. A towel over the latch of the vault reduces noise and prevents the latch locking the door from the inside. He starts a timer on a stopwatch and after a few minutes opens the door to let in air. Once safe, he tells the family they can't stay, there isn't enough food or water. Evelyn thinks she recognizes the man and says, Emmett, to which Emmett unmasks his face from the scarf and baseball cap he'd been wearing. Evelyn asks about Emmett's children and he explains his sons died on day one. Evelyn asks after Lola, his wife. He explains Lola died 11 weeks ago, that she got sick and they moved down to the soundproof basement of this derelict warehouse once the pain was too bad and she was screaming. Emmett says, I couldn't do enough. Evelyn asks why didn't he didn't come for them, since they were friends. Emmett explains that the people left, you don't know, do you? Very few survivors were left on earth. They're not people worth saving. Regan signs and whispers, you're nothing like him, Lee, to Emmett. Regan goes to her brother who is lying down to rest having had his ankle painfully dressed, in the vault to mute his screams. Regan gives Marcus headphones and plays radio white noise to him, scrolling through the frequencies. Suddenly Marcus hears music and sits bolt upright. Regan stops turning the dial and Evelyn rushes over. And Evelyn listens. Shocked she turns to Emmett who explains yes it's just a song, across the sea. Regan signs that he is a liar telling her mum that, dad would have heard it, he would have told us. Emmett explains that you can't hear that signal down in the valley, where the Abbots lived, he and Lola only discovered it when they moved up here. Regan works out the signal originates from an island nearby. Regan attempts to convince Marcus to help her find a way to the radio tower, by following railway tracks to the coast then finding a boat. 
She wants to get to the station so that she can use the station to transmit the high-frequency noise her hearing aid produces, that exposes weak spots on the aliens. In this way anyone, including the family, can use a radio to play the high-pitched noise and protect themselves from the aliens, a significant step towards a better way of life. Marcus is very worried and does not want Regan to go. Regan insists she has to try because that's what dad would have done. Regan is forced to venture out on her own very early in the morning after Marcus threatens to tell mom. She leaves a note on the radio saying, keep listening. In the morning, after discovering that Regan has gone, Evelyn pleads Emmett to go after her and bring her back. He eventually agrees when Evelyn says that she wishes Lee was here to look him in the eye and tell him Regan is exactly the type of person worth saving. Meanwhile Regan comes across a train station with a derailed train and climbs aboard the front carriage, which is the only one still on the train track. There are several dead bodies, skeletons. She needs a first aid kit and finds one in the driver booth but struggles to open the door. She eventually reaches the box and takes it but the skeleton of the dead driver falls on her causing a fright and she screams. An alien shortly arrives and Regan is trapped struggling to hold the hearing aid to the microphone in one hand and operate the shotgun in the other. Luckily Emmett arrives and shoots the creature. They hide in nearby station office due to fear the noise will have attracted more aliens. Emmett explains he is here to take her home. Regan is not happy and says, what, home? Regan explains her plan to Emmett, and says that before when his wife died there wasn't anything he could do but now there is. Emmett decides to help her complete the mission. Back at Emmett's base, Evelyn has to leave Marcus and the baby to get supplies they require. Marcus is very scared and doesn't want her to go. Evelyn explains his foot will get worse and she can't lose him too. She walks back to the sand path and follows the route she and the family uses to get to the store, where Lee bought oranges on day one. Along the way she passes the bridge where Bo died where a makeshift shrine is. She touched the photographs crying and places her wedding ring on top of the cross. By nightfall Emmett and Regan reach some docks and look for a boat they can take to reach the island. They find a little girl at the end of the pontoon. Emmett goes up to her and she suddenly traps him in a noose. Several feral people appear who tie netting with bottles around Emmett and begin to search Regan for supplies. Emmett signs, dive, to Regan. Then he wriggles opens the netting making lots of noise and grabs the man who took Regan's hearing aid. Several aliens appear and attack the docks, killing a number of feral people. Emmett is still holding the man and an alien comes to attack due to the noise of the bottles. Emmett dives into the water and the feral man is killed by the alien. The alien then hears Emmett swimming in the water, and jumps after him, only to drown as it cannot swim. Emmett is still tied to the dock and struggles to remove the noose from his neck. A small boat comes by and Regan's hand reaches out to him. He climbs aboard and opens his mouth to reveal Regan's hearing aid. They remove the noose and we see their boat heading to the island. Meanwhile Evelyn returns to compound with the supplies and hears an alien making a loud cry. She tries to explode the alien by shooting an oxygen tank but the alien is unscathed. The explosion does, however, trigger the fire sprinklers. The noise of the sprinklers helps Evelyn navigate around the alien and return to the basement. The alien does chase her though. Evelyn hides inside the bunker with Marcus and the infant, with the alien waiting outside the door for them. Regan and Emmett approach the island where they find a colony of people living normal lives after isolating themselves to the island. After the government realized the creatures could not swim, the National Guard had as many people as possible put on the islands. However, one of the creatures manages to get to the island on another boat and kills several civilians. However, they lure the creature away to where the radio station is, and it follows them inside. The alien eventually hears Regan and Emmett, slicing Emmett with its claws. However, as it goes after Regan, she is able to change the sound coming from the station from the song to the noise her hearing aid produced weakening the creature, as she eventually kills it with a pole. Marcus, picking up the signal through the radio, also uses the noise to weaken the creature, shooting it dead, now allowing anyone to be able to kill the creatures. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notification, so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.